today on Steve's Tractor Adventures. Why would you buy an 8122 with a broken axle? Well, it's cheap enough and you can do the work yourself. Have a nice tractor when we're done. Moving it, on the other hand, is half the battle. So I think we've got something good going on here. We're good off camera. Just kind of got to babysit them both. So uh, I'm going to push this up in the shop backwards. And then uh, we'll get to fixing it. Maybe this weekend, maybe not. Or we'll steer. Get 88 out of the rig, we'll shove her up in there. So I can hear all six of you guys, maybe seven, that guy just tuned in. Steve, what are you really going to do with this thing in a broken axle? Well, I'm going to take it apart and fix it, I mean that's, that's uh, you know what I'm going to do. So I just went and pulled this differential out I had bought uh, with a box of rider parts, at, um, actually last year's mowing. So the axle over here, the keyway and everything is good, but if we go over here, uh, something wrong here. So, if I don't tear another tractor or another transmission apart, which I have a couple over there that are just have a couple bolts holding them together, um, I could take this axle over here. Uh, take the different both the both differentials apart and swap that axle in, swap that axle out. Um, the nice thing about doing differential work is all you really got to do is pull the side cover off. You don't have to pull the motor off or uh, any of the linkage or anything up top, except for the forward clutch and the brake um, and the two bolts. Uh, on the front of the transmission and the two bolts going into the engine adapter plate. So that simplifies a lot, uh, believe it or not. You, you may say, Steve, it's three cotter pins, two bolts. Well, that adds up. But the other thing I'm, you probably don't have to do, but what I am going to do is I am going to pull this axle block off as well. That way, when you put the new axle in, you don't damage the seal because right now it's not leaking oil. Uh, I'm assuming there's oil in it. I'm probably going to drain the oil. Uh, maybe I'll come out here tomorrow or the, or the next day or something and get the axle changed because in all reality, I have the parts for it. There is some Afro-engineering going on with this thing. Uh, debris guard. Assuming, judging by the rear... Uh, the rear guard that he probably had a cart or something come off and go in and hit the engine screen and there's actually another screen floating around here in the box um, along with the hub uh, hub broken piece of axle so I'm gonna have to press that out there should be a good keyway in there hopefully I didn't really look at that but Again, it is what it is. And I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I gave $150 for this. It came from the original owner. Uh, he actually gave me a lot of the paperwork and stuff. I already put that in the house for it. Um, and he kept uh, very good records of this thing. 
He was actually, um, he was either a Volkswagen mechanic or a BMW mechanic. I think it was Volkswagen. So he took fairly good care of it. Um, he had already changed out one whole rear end and then he broke another axle on this thing. So I'm not quite sure what he was doing. He said he mowed some steep hills with this thing. So I'm a thinking he slid down off the hill and into a gopher hole or something a lot or he come down off a hill over a little curb or onto a road or a driveway and that little you know it don't seem like much if you go over an inch and a half bump but if you do that say a hundred and say two three hundred times a year mowing your grass it adds up and none of these axles anymore are spring chickens they quit making these axles in the mid 80s which is uh We'll call them 10 years older than me, 40 years old at a minimum. So, alright guys, like I said, I'm going to uh, get the oil drain in here. I don't know if I'll really show you guys unbolting um, everything or not, or if you guys just want to see the repair and the diff. And by the time you guys get the voice and opinion, I'll already be done with this. So, stay tuned guys. He didn't leave me a battery. Son of a... Terrible deal. Now there's gas in it though. Looks like there's a fair bit of gas. <laughs> Quarter half tank of gas. Noise. Alright boys, so I come out here a little before lunch. Um, just to stoke the fire and get it warm in here. It's uh, almost 60 degrees now. But uh, pretty much I got the transmission prepped to pull the side cover off and then pull the axle out. All I got to do is pull the bolts for the side cover, right? Right. I got the two bolts out <clears throat> that mount the engine and the engine adapter plate to the side cover of the transmission. The two bolts that hold it to the frame. E-clip is pulled off the PTO, um, what do you want to call it, the engagement shaft. It basically holds the spring back. Um, brake shaft. Ooh. Okay. Brake drum I got off. I got the clutch off. I need to pull the snap ring though for the um, for the what the clutch spring rides on. So I do have to do that. Maybe I'll do that before I go in. Um, axle bearings are obviously out. Um, and the frame is unbolted. I'll flip it up a little more so it's out of the road when I go to do it. Um, seat pan's off. Uh, and the hitch is unbolted. And that's that's really it. I mean, it seems really complicated, but it's not. So hopefully I don't make this big spiel and then when I put it back together it's all screwed up. You know how that goes some days. Make everything sound easy and then everything screws you up. I mean, this is a terrible job. Really hard guy doesn't know what he's gonna do so maybe I'll set the camera up when I pull the uh, side cover off um, otherwise I think I'm pretty much just gonna go for broke so back with you guys after lunch and I got a place to go for dinner so I'm not gonna work out here too long this afternoon I'll catch everybody later All right, boys. So it's about uh, I don't know 110, 115 or so here. Got all the bolts out. I took a rag, went around and cleaned as much of the dirt off as I could where the transmission's going to split. This transmission has never been split. There is still paint on the gasket or powder coat, whatever it is. Um, so hopefully it comes apart nice. There's a couple steps. Um, I read this in a service manual somewhere, and I know part of it helps for sure but you uh, want to disengage the PTO just because that heavy spring on there will deflect that shaft and make it a pain to get out. Um, I want to put it in low range because that pulls the detents out of the um, side cover along with putting it in second. That's what I've always done. It always seems to work. So, without further ado, you get yourself a dead blow hammer or at least a rubber mallet. And 
This one's going to split right apart. Nice. Um, tab. Where's it at? All right. Let me get a screwdriver. I want to try and reuse this gasket. Because A is, I don't have one. So, I'm only going to be able to do that in a couple places here. slow, I could probably save the gas. Naturally, it's wanting to half stick to the cover, half stick to the case. Looks like back at the motor, it's wanting to stick at the case, so... Uh, Try and replicate that in the front. Let me get a small screwdriver. I had one somewhere when I was working on the Super H, but did I put it back or on the bench? Nobody knows. Toolbox? In the toolbox. Oh no, that's not it. That's a crappy one, but. Maybe it'd be good enough to save this here gas can. Where it seems to stick is where the gasket something fall. Crap. The brake shaft definitely pulled out a lot. So. I got problems. I know where to look. Yep. Should probably uh put a rag down instead of letting transmission parts fall into the dirt. Not a very smart man, but... Probably a good idea. Alright. Let's face the music, because I think I already unscrewed up a this pool because I think I think I pulled the brake shaft out and I think okay the gasket is loose so that's nice we'll be able to reuse that um, but anyhow I think I pulled the brake shaft out of the housing so I think and I could be wrong. Okay, save the gasket. I'll leave that over here on the tire. Remember that's there. Remove the cover. Put on top of 
that nice cardboard I have? Right there. Okay. So, what I like to do, now that it's apart, the uh, washer, come off of the final. You're also coming out of the final. And this washer here did not come from there. That makes that simple. But I'm going to assume it came from here because of the spacer that is behind it. And the spacer would not go against the cover the machine washer would. So, other thing to note, the um, forward clutch keyway is still here and in place. I got very lucky with that. It was pointing straight up. So uh, I think we're good for the second. The only thing, and it may just have been uh, those washers I heard there, but since I got to pull the dip out, I'll be able to inspect the bottom really good. I did just think about something weird though, because see, there's still red slash orange paint on this gasket. So this transmission would be original, but a red spring PTO would not be original to this transmission. I'll have to look at the casting date on the transmission and see, but I didn't think the red spring PTO clutches come out until later. This tractor's an 81, but I don't know what the transmission was out of. So maybe that's the thing. I don't know. So, but anyhow, you guys can see we got a nice good uh, clutch gap there. So that's been done. Or at least as nice original yet. But uh, at the moment, I'm not seeing anything scary looking in here. Everything looks good. The roll pins look good in the shifters. Yep, high-low looks good. So, it looks like, in order to pull that rear, uh, the differential out, I'm probably going to have to pull the high-low shift gear and uh, the end off the final, I believe. Because I don't think I can get it to slide underneath that gear. So, I'm still going to have to pull out um, the little ball and the high and low. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? I've never actually pulled a diff out of one of these before. So, learning experience. Alright guys, i got to wander around and find my little stick magnet, stick magnet, stick magnet I have to go down in there and get the uh, uh, little ball bearing out for that. And I have no idea where it's at. I'm going to have to double check my lunchbox and stuff. I thought I had it out here fishing for something one day. But, uh, I'm going to have to look around and see if I can find it. I, uh, I don't remember. Because I found my big magnet stuck to the side of the toolbox. But only my one big magnet. Magnet. Not the small magnet or the other really good magnet I have. So, alright. I'm going to have to look around. Because I think I was using it on a farm all cub. Okay, so I'll be back with you guys when I find it. Alright boys, was in fact in my lunchbox. Old mechanic days. Hmm. And actually, that's too big. Great. Wasted 10 minutes for no reason. So, get it out beforehand, if you know what I mean. So, quarter inch bolt, a stick magnet, that works. Now I gotta put this somewhere, it won't roll away. So. Remember guys, I'm going to lay this 
on the bench over here with the wheel lug bolts. All right. All right. So any kind of luck, we should be done fishing with a magnet. Um, what do I do with the screwdriver? Right underneath my foot. Yay. Come on. Remove the little cotton picking clip there out of the shifter for the high and low. So now, everything we need to do, we should be able to do from down here. Alright, so, start with the obvious. easier to deal with anyhow. Oh. Well I'm just pull the whole final final shaft out. Perfect. I'm gonna just pull the gear off the end but it uh, decided it didn't want to do that. Now the other washer fell out on the back, so, uh, excuse me, just ate lunch. So we'll stick that on there since that fell out. Um, I think I'm going to have to pull this gear off the top. Now if you guys are scared and don't know what's going on, there's some really good uh, parts breakdowns of this stuff online, so do not hesitate if you are unsure to pull said diagrams. I'm actually going to pull this off first. I'll set it down here. This last washer did not come out. So usually, um, I forget exactly what they call these, but there's usually like a backer washer, the needle bearing washers, and then another backer washer to, or, to them. Thrust washers, that's what they are. So this one off top shaft. More so than anything, just make sure they go back where they came from. And do watch, because the further you get into some of these gears, there are keyways on some of them. This one just has needle bearings on there, and the shaft is just for an idler. So now, should be able just to pull the... Uh, high low clutch gear off right right I don't even know I have to pull it the whole way out I just have to get the gear off which I'll just pull it off like that so at this point the axle shaft should nice to have a rag but Should basically just pull out of there, but that bearing on the other side may be fighting us. I'm pretty sure this brake shaft is not in the hole. I don't know if that wasn't in the hole. Yeah, was that? Is that no, that's good. Um, anyhow, I'm gonna take the uh, dead blow hammer and hit on the end of that other axle. Hopefully it'll knock the bearing out without knocking this off the cribbing I got under it. 
knock the bearing, well, knock the bearing and the axle out. I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to spill all the gears out. this down somewhere oh jeez and uh try not to make a big oily mess which I'm already doing and we'll switch an axle out so I've never actually opened up a gravely rider diff before I've been into the walk behinds pretty heavy but not the riders so and those are also half inch, not nine sixteenths. Great. That's why they're such a pain. Hello. They're also grade eight bolts. So what I want to do when I pull this apart, I want to keep this bearing on the new axle. Because the bearings on the other axle are, let's just say they're not brand new. Is that the last bolt? I guess so. Put behind door number one, actual snap ring. So it shouldn't be too hard to change this. Differential itself looks good. Hopefully, you guys can see it from there. So basically, I'm going to do that to the other diff. Um, I'm going to press the bearing off and press that bearing onto the other axle over there and then uh, I guess bring you guys back for reassembly huh alright see you guys then alright guys so a couple points of interest I learned while you guys were charging the bearings actually stay with the housing so uh, got no need to have to uh, mess with that uh, other than that, uh, nothing too out of the ordinary or, you know, unspecial. Pretty sure that gear is just held in there by the, uh, the suction of the oil. For anybody who's a mechanic or who ever messed with anything. You understand about the suction of oil. So I think we should be good to go there. It seems like this is sticking out an awful fair bit, but in reality, it's probably about how it was. Let's uh, play with this one. Oh yeah, that's what it does. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we don't have two different axle lengths. 
was the only thing I wasn't real sure on going into this, and uh, I can't compare it with the old one because it's, uh, you know, twisted off. Okay, so, snap rings back in. I'll uh, go back over here and I'll bolt the uh, two pieces of the diff back together. And as you guys can see, the axle we're dealing with is off of this side of the diff. And the other axle, the gear is actually machined into that, near as I can tell. Unless it is just thereby stuck with oil friction, but to me it looks like it's machined all one piece. So, more you know. And if you ever hear about guys that are pulling hubs, and all of a sudden the axle will pull out, this snap ring right here, is the one that pops off inside. There we go. Kinda glad I looked at that. Wasn't quite down in there, now it is. But uh, anyhow, this is what snaps off inside and you gotta tear this the whole way apart in order to do this. So, All right, let's reassemble. Putting her back together, whoop whoo. Everybody see, guys in the back? So when I took this apart, the bolts went through from that side into this side. Now I don't know if that matters or not, but because it worked before. So as I think I just found out, there's different hole spacing for these. More better? Seems more better. Do you know the whole pattern is spaced out differently? Alright, let me sit. You guys can't see it, the other diff is rolling. So let's just uh, tighten these up. Probably a torque spec. If you try to twist them both at the same time, the whole axle should turn. So I do believe you got everything pointed in the right direction here. The nice thing is the gasket come off, so. No clean up there. So I'll go back around and double check these off camera. Because I don't want these to come apart. These are only 5 16 bolts, so. Alright, boys, we got a reassembled diff. So uh, we'll put it all back together and hopefully we won't ever have to do this again. Right? Right. Perfect.
Alright boys, so start reassembling. Anybody want to grab me the hammer and tap the end of the axle a little bit? It started in there. You can't pull on the axle from the other side because you risk pulling the uh, snap rings off. Uh, I guess I'm just going to wail on this thing here off camera and hopefully I don't knock it down off the blocks. So guys, I have to apologize. I tried to make a video of putting the transmission back together and Sony decided that it would be a good time to, uh, uh, for some reason, lock the zoom up on the camera, and it quit recording. So, uh, lost all that footage, but it's back together. Uh, the axle just took a little bit of uh, finessing and wheeling off camera. Everything went back together good. Just can't show you guys that I did it, because I'm sure not doing it again. Because, uh, yeah, it's just, it's not worth that, so... Guys will just have to believe me. But, uh, yeah. So, anyhow, I guess I'm going to let the camera battery charge since I have failed as being a YouTuber. And I'll bring you guys back whenever I go to start it. Because I've never actually heard this tractor run. For all I know, the motor knocks. I don't know. That really annoys me that I didn't record that. Son of a beached seal biscuit. It's gotten me three times in the last two months. <sighs> really annoys you. So, anyhow, I've heard the guys with GoPros complain, Panasonic, any kind of camera. So, alright, let you guys charge and bring you guys back. The fuel was off. So, I'm going to stand to this side because the battery is just sitting on the footrest because it's too big for this. This is just a test. So, uh, see what happens. Check that oil I was talking about. Clean and right on the full mark. Perfect. So, let's see if it'll crank over here.
can button her back up and minus the battery, I can uh, try and drive this thing around. So, got no uh, big spewing leaks or anything. And I just dumped all the oil back in it that I drained out. So, the oil level should be really close. Alright, I guess uh, I'm going to put the rear hitch back on because that's the only reason I didn't put the tires back on. It's just, uh, it's just a lot easier. So, Alright, let me do that guys and I'll get back with you. Alright boys and girls, so sitting on both rear tires, all four wheels here. The only thing, to my knowledge, and you know how that goes, uh, that it needs is I'm probably going to stick a deck under it. Um, I think it's probably too late in the season to put a snow plow on it, plus we haven't... I've plowed snow once. Kind of. So, uh, yeah, but that's uh, that's all I really know it needs is a battery. I don't have one to fit underneath the hood, and it's missing a shifter knob. I think I'm all out of shifter knobs. I'll have to double check on that, but I think I am. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for the, I believe it's a 81-81-22 project here. Uh, I did notice when I had the transmission apart, it does have the gear in it for the uh, uh, for the hydraulic pump. So, maybe one day we make it hydraulic lift. I think, I, I know I have a pump. Probably have some lines and a tank. And I know I have the rock shaft and a cylinder somewhere. So, uh, yeah. But for right now, until I actually drive it out of the shop, which may be tomorrow, got uh, don't really want to call it a date, but uh, was invited over to have dinner with some friends, and I'm gonna go and go do that and enjoy it. And that's gonna be it for right now, guys. Hopefully, we'll see the 8122 out of the shop next time. So, later, guys. I also need to finish the Cub Original, the Westchester, the Farmall Cub. Look, her eyeball fell out. I had to steal that for something else. Long story. So, later guys. Alright guys, just back to Super H out. Started up the 8122 here. I probably should just ride it, but you know how that goes. The steering on this thing, holy cow is it like... Should have maybe uh, cleaned my path out a little bit. Huh? Oh, gonna hit the milk crate. No, not the milk crate with the battery on it. Oh. That's where a little bit of pre planning goes a long ways. Alright, get this thing outside here. I'm gonna shut the door. Keep some of the heat in. It is only 40 degrees. Excuse me, degrees. So, take her for a bit of a run here. So, I don't really have anything I can do with a tractor this time of year. Right at the moment. See, I'm about out of firewood. But, uh, I could put a deck on it and mow some leaves, but just go out and drive it around and enjoy it. See if anything falls apart. I gotta remember this does not have turf tires or chains on it. This could go very badly. And it's got one uh, turf saver on it and one, uh, I almost call them like no name brands. Oh, you know what I could do? Uh, I could pull the lawn roller around. But Spots like this. Uh oh. Uh oh. 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 Oh.
all boys for the 150 bucks and the four hours worth of time I got into it I think uh, I think we're doing pretty good so pretty much I started uh, yesterday about 1130 even if you say 1230 130 230 I was done at 430 five hours but I took an hour lunch so four hours I put into this I'm, uh, I'm very pleased with it it's actually in pretty nice shape um, so I'm gonna wash this thing this would be a tractor I would almost be tempted to mess around with and buff because you can see like the red coming out in the power co powder coat here just buff it and see what happens but that's for another day can't be pretty so later guys on to the next project, whatever that may be.